Hey, it's Dr. Brenda, founder of the Dream Plan Save Do program and the Gutsy Women Club coming at you on a Money Monday. Hey, please subscribe below if you already subscribed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate it. And this is Dolly hanging out in the background. It's a, a windy day, so I am in the RV. I am a full-time RVer traveling the country doing my work from the RV. It's a pretty, pretty sweet life. So it is back to school time. Some of you may have already spent all your money on back to school items. Others are, you know, being more strategic. Let's look into some of the data. Okay. This is from a July survey. 36% of parents feel pressured to overspend 36%. And that pressure is higher for younger parents. So about half of millennials who already did their back to school shopping said that they spent more than they're comfortable with. Those figures dropped down um, um, to 37% of Generation Xers, for instance. Um, so the younger you are, the more likely you are subject to social media. So that's one of the one of the reasons that that's, this is going on. In terms of how much people are spending, you ready? Okay, K through 12, the average amount spent back to school, $859. That's up 8% from the previous year. College, about $1,200. That's up 13%. So there are a couple of things that are going on in terms of, of that spending. One is inflation. Things are just costing a lot. You know, the supply chain is still not where it used to be. Inflation is driving up the costs. The other thing is this mentality that we have that, you know what, these kids have been, um, you know, doing online courses. They've been, they've been stuck in the house for most of the year of last year. It's like they lost an entire school year. So I want to make it up to them. I want to splurge. I want to, you know, make sure that they have everything that they need, that they want. So those two types of things going on, you know, the psychological factors, as well as, you know, the economy, the inflation, just driving stuff up. All right. So how do you make sure that the kids have what they need? Maybe not everything they want, but how do you make sure that you just stick to a budget that you rein in your spending? Okay, one of these things is limit or get off social media. Why? Because here's what happens. You've got a friend, you've got a family member, and they did all this great shopping, and they bought little Jordan these fancy sneakers, and they hold it up, and like, oh, my kid's going to be the best-dressed kid in the class. And you're like, oh, man, you know, I, I, maybe, I, maybe my kid needs, I got to keep up with them. It's keeping up with the Joneses mentality. And you if you are one of those folks that are bragging about your high-end expensive purchases for the kids or, um, you know what, lay off. We just don't need to keep piling on the pressure of parents that you, your kids got to have a certain brand and got to look right. So that's one of those things is just limit, get off of social media for a while. All right. Now, second thing. Kids grow all the time. They outgrow their clothes in months sometimes, all right? So can you buy used? Can you buy used? I mean, there's really good quality kids' clothes, rarely, rarely used, and you can get them at a bargain. There's also Facebook has um, uh, groups that are basically buy-nothing groups. Um, uh, buy-nothing groups, yeah. So... You know, you can find some things, I mean, for a really good price, and nobody's going to know but you that it's used. Okay, number three, encourage your child to be unique. Okay, I can hear you now. Well, they're going to get picked on. They're going to, you know, they're going to get bullied if they don't have the right brand of jeans, if their backpack is a, has a dinosaur on. You know what? Um... It, it comes with kid territory, unfortunately, and sometimes it comes with adult territory, too. But it's okay for your kid to be unique. You know, if, if he, she, they want something that's a little bit different out there, it's okay. Let them choose. Let them be unique. Um, you know, certainly you don't want to uh, 
uh, you know, put them in some type of crazy, you know, clothing that, that you know they're going to get picked on. But yeah, let them be unique. Okay, number four, prioritize. Okay, you really have to prioritize. If you want, um, you know, five different things here and you want, you know, this really special thing that costs the same as these five items, you can't have them both, what are you going to get? So you really have to begin to prioritize. Sure, you know, you've got the supplies. The school supplies are not what's breaking your budget. You know, an extra notebook, more colored pencils. Uh, yet yeah, adds a little bit to it. What's breaking the budget are those high-end things, maybe um, uh, it's usually the clothing, the backpacks, and the shoes, things of that nature. So prioritize. What's really important? What can you give it, give up and what can you not? Prioritize, just like you should be doing with your adult budget, okay? All right, now my last thing, and this is what I really encourage you to do, is to get your kid involved. I mean, why not use the back to school, the back to school specials, back to school, no sales tax, back to school, all this great stuff as a lesson in finances for your kids. It doesn't have to be a drain. It doesn't have to be icky, you know. Here's what we're talking about. So, you know, you can make sure your kid has a choice. All right, here's, here's a certain amount of money and that kid gets to choose how to spend it. Now, they might surprise you. Um, another way to get the kid involved is saying, okay, look, you know, I know you really want, you really want this item it's just, it's just really expensive. You're going to have to contribute. You know, maybe I'll, I'll help you set up a lemonade stand. Uh, maybe you can, you can take care of the neighbor's dog. You do have the kid contribute toward that special item that, that, that he, she, they want. Okay. So, um, I had a little trick with when my kid was younger, not necessarily back to school, but when we would take vacations, I would have little coupons, so you know, okay, we she could have a, a meal here, and or trade it in for cash, okay? And we had a couple of coupons, an ice cream coupon, and and a little souvenir coupon, and um, it really made her think about what what it is that she wants. And sometimes she's like, hey, you know what? I'd rather have the cash, so she would trade it in. So you can set up sort of a coupon system with your kid that you know you can have um you know three pairs of pants and three shirts or one pair of tennis shoes or you know if you it, you know figure out a way that that you can get the kid involved in making those decisions if you only and you know have have them be a part of the discussion of the plan of the budgeting so um you know what? Kids can surprise you. Uh, I've, I, when I was raising my kid, uh, we had uh, a money jar. So, you know, money jar for savings, a money jar for a dream fund, even a money jar for retirement. And it's never too early to, to start, you know, thinking about that, a money for charity. And when she filled up her emergency savings fund, it's like, okay, I filled up my emergency savings. I said, okay, it's up to you you can decide where that extra two dollars is going to go it can go go into any of your other you go into your fun fun your fun jar you know whatever you want to do with it and um what she decided to do with it is put it into charity we were uh, going to be traveling to ukraine which is her home country and where i adopted her from and we were going to go back to her uh orphanage and visit the orphanage and she wanted to contribute some of her own money so she put that money into the charity jar so just give kids a chance to make those decisions because yes they may surprise you get them involved uh, uh, see if they can contribute to getting that you know fun item that expensive item that they might want and you know what sometimes understand that the kids don't really care primarily especially when they're younger it's the parents you know you're trying to look good in front of all the other parents so dissect why you want to buy something for your kid is it because it makes me look good or because the kid needs it that kid really wants it think about that just think about that so 
All right, trim your spending, folks. Buy used. Have the, have the kid get involved. Um, absolutely prioritize and watch out for that social media. All right, good luck. And if you have any tips and tricks on cutting your back-to-school budget, let me know. Add them in the comments. And uh, um, I'd, I'd love to know how you did this year with with your back to school budget your, your your expenses all right until next time hey please subscribe below and yeah dolly said it's getting warm in here it's time to turn the ac back up and all right you guys take care bye bye